Hey all, Joe here with All Funnies and Games, and today I'm going to be using the character creation rules from D&D 5th edition for what I think should be a fun character creation exercise. So I put the races, classes, and backgrounds on a dice table, and rolling on it I got back Dwarf, Fighter, and Urchin. So I'm going to go ahead and bring all these pieces together and see what kind of character comes out of it. I'm going to kind of model out a couple of different poses, builds, and faces to test out what works well for an interesting character. I'll need to decide if she works better as a young or an old character, and whether I want the scrawniness typical to an urchin, or the solid stoutness typical to a dwarf to really be the dominant look of the silhouette. One thing I'd like to mention is that this way of blocking out the hips that I'm doing is something I picked up watching a video that Babin Illustration did on drawing dynamic poses. I say this to say one, go check out Babin Illustration, and two, I hope I'm setting a good example that you always ought to keep learning, keep picking things up, keep adding tools that you like to your tool belt. On that note, this method of sketching out a few different ideas and making kind of a gestalt of your best ideas for the final version it's something I picked up a few years ago from watching Draw with Jazza. He mentions this in enough of his videos that I couldn't point to a single video from memory and say, yeah, that one goes into this. But really, you can just pick any one of his videos and watch it. They're all really good. I did spend some time thinking about what kind of weapon she should have. I think clubs, saps, and daggers really fit the urchin archetype the best. Okay, so I'm going to take my early versions of the sketches and just kind of slide them down to the side here. And that's going to let me make sure that I can still see them and make room for me to draw in the final version. So I decided I liked the pants better than the dress to give the urchin feel, and I wanted the cloak to kind of look like a tattered blanket, so it's a very thick knot and it's very torn up at the bottom. I went for an old, wizened, street-tough look to bring together the fighter and the urchin elements and landed on a thin club in one hand, and a sock with a brick in it in the other hand. I think that conveys both her martial abilities and her street smart innovation. I think having her in foot wraps conveys that she is poor, but she's resourceful with what she has. I wanted the color palette to be somewhat washed out, and the clothes to mostly consist of browns and grays. In feudal times, and therefore in high fantasy settings, dyes weren't really a common thing for the average person. So if a commoner or a beggar was wearing wool, it's wool colored. Period. That's it. All right, and then I'm going to finish this off with just a dark outline to smooth out the silhouette and make the whole thing look a little bit more finished. All right, and there she is. So comment below if you have any ideas of what I should name her. I did not put any thought into that part of this at all. Uh, also, I'm brainstorming what my 100 subscriber special should look like. So let me know in the comments as well if there's anything you'd like to see come out of that. I want to give a big thank you to F.A. Vebestinazin Maserilari and to Sasha and Paige Vlogs who commented on my last videos. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you can like, comment, subscribe, and more than any of that, you can tell a friend about this channel and what I'm doing here. I'll see you on the next one.